Trigger warning. The following video contains disturbing images of Roosh V's face. Looking directly into his cold, dead eyes may cause bowel movements or a prolapsed uterus. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Dick Coughlin. In my long and colourful time here on the internet, I've come across some pretty bizarre and contemptible people, but none of them compare to Roosh V. He is the worst person I've ever met on the internet, and that's coming from a guy who was once stalked by a wig-wearing teenager who believed he was an alien Jesus. Don't ask. Roosh V is a pickup artist and self-published author of what he calls Bang Books, which are a series of travel journals documenting his debauched sexual exploits in various countries around the world. In terms of their attitude to sex and gender politics, it makes Fifty Shades of Grey look like the female eunuch by Jermaine Greer. Now, you might find it depressing that there are actually men out there who have forked out hard-earned money to read a book about another man they don't know who goes on holiday just to get his end away. And it is. But what's even more depressing is that in some of these books, he doesn't even get fucking laid. One of his books is subtly titled Don't Bang Denmark, in which Roosh goes to Denmark to bang women and fails. His excuse? Socialism. Yes, he actually believes that the Danish political system is set up to condition people not to be manipulated by opportunistic sexual predators. Oh, the humanity. He also claimed that Danish women are the most unfeminine he's ever met, which I consider to be praising with faint damnation, and that not a drop of female blood courses through their veins, all because of socialism. If there was ever a better reason to vote for Bernie Sanders, I haven't seen it. For a while, Roosh V was tangentially associated with the men's rights movement, who don't have a great track record when it comes to not being associated with angry, sexually repressed creeps, although to their credit, even they have realised how utterly loathsome and damaging to their cause Roosh V is, and he's been denounced and distanced by the majority of them. One example would be Dean Esme, who writes for the website A Voice for Men, which is a unique voice and one that will make you glad that throat cancer is a thing. In a blog post last year, Dean Esme wrote, wrote, the media has decided that confessed rapist Roosh V is an MRA. He is not. He is a snake oil salesman peddling bad advice to confuse men to pollute their bodies with dangerous barely legal hormones and other dodgy supplements along with equally bad advice on health, exercise and women. He is not an MRA. Now, I for one have trouble distinguishing that description from an MRA, but in this case, I'll give Dean S. May a mulligan. This excommunication led to Roosh having to find his own niche philosophy in order to justify and legitimise his rampant misogyny. He calls it neo-masculinity, which is ironic seeing as some of his best friends are supporters of many other ideologies, some of which also start with neo. Earlier this year, Roosh V suddenly found himself in hot water. Sadly, not for long enough to poach the sick fuck. When he suddenly became the focus of mainstream media attention after he announced that there would be 43 meetups at various locations around the world for his followers, or as I like to call it, Sausage Fest 2016. One of the main talking points against Rouge was that he was a pro-rape advocate, which stems from a blog post slash YouTube video he made last year entitled How to Stop Rape. Sadly, this video didn't show Roosh cutting off his dick and feeding it to a pack of wolves. Instead, he argued that rape could be prevented if you simply made it legal on private property. Now, this is an idea so devoid of logic, common sense and intelligence that it doesn't even deserve to be refuted. But apparently, I don't need to refute it. Because according to Roosh, it was never meant to be taken seriously. He even went as far to describe it as satire. There are several problems I have with this explanation. Firstly, what the fuck was he satirising? Himself? I don't know, but apparently neither does Roosh, because he's been asked this on several occasions, including once on the BBC, and he's never managed to give a straight answer. Secondly, Roosh isn't a satirist and has never claimed to be. If this article was satire, it means it's the only one that he's ever written out of the thousands that exist on both of his websites. How many other articles are there that are now apparently satire? Thirdly, he didn't claim that this video was satire until after it started getting lots of media attention. It certainly didn't seem that it was satire to Roosh's fans at the time, at least until after he told them that it was, at which point they all suddenly fell into line and spouted the narrative like the obedient lapdogs they are. Oh yeah, Roosh, that was totally satire, yeah, pff, knew it all along, got hilarious, brilliant, totally got it, yeah, legalised rape, good one, Peter Cook is alive and well. But the main reason I don't buy that it's satire is because it's not even the worst or craziest thing that Roosh V has ever said. In fact, it ties in perfectly with the tone and narrative of everything else he's ever written. So for the purposes of this video, let's grant him the benefit of the doubt and say, OK, Roosh, that article was satire. It was shit satire, but it was satire. 
But what about all of these other times you vomited a plate of batshit sandwiches onto the internet and it wasn't a joke? I'm Dick Coffin from whatacuntyouare.com and here are five times Rouge V was not satire. Number one, denying evolution. Before I get into the more unpleasant aspects of Rouge, I'd like to start here because it's just plain weird. Rouge V thinks that evolution doesn't happen, but not in the way that you might be accustomed to. Unlike most creationists who believe that evolution is a myth that has never happened, Rouge V believes that evolution did happen, just not anymore. He made this outrageous claim in a blog posted in June of 2015 entitled The Theory of Evolution Does Not Apply to Modern Humans. Before I get into this, I need to point out that Rouge V claims to have studied microbiology for four years at university. He doesn't say that he passed the course and got a degree, and based on his approach to the scientific method, it's hard to imagine that he would have. I'm not a scientist either. I'm a professional wanker. But even I know a bad argument when I hear one. In the blog, Rouge writes... In the past year, a thought entered my brain that I had trouble addressing. Why have I yet to reproduce? I'm nearly 36 years old, with ample resources, intellect, health, biological strength, and access to females, and apparently humility. But I have not yet produced a child. It's not that I'm ejaculating inside women but failing to impregnate them, but I'm consciously and deliberately halting insemination for reasons that Darwin and his followers have not addressed. Yet you heard that right, Rouge V thinks that evolution does not happen anymore because rather than ejaculating inside the woman that he's fucking, he's pulling out at the last minute at the point of critical mass and blowing his load on the carpet. Apparently this is a problem as well for Charles Darwin, even though the cunt's been dead for for 130 years. Roosh continues, I've had more fertile sexual partners than some kings and nobles of old. Yes, that is literally how he put it. But have not reproduced once, meaning that game, in the way that I have practiced and taught it, has gone squarely against evolution. In other words, remaining a virgin to this day, as opposed to embarking on a multi-year world sex tour with triple digit partners, would not at all have changed the childless result I face at this moment. This of course is ignoring the fact that most women would probably rather raise one of their own turds as a child than the bastard offspring of Rouge V. Apparently, in Rouge's world, if you're not getting a woman pregnant every time you spooge inside of her, then that is enough to debunk the world's most important scientific theory. The blog, which is linked below, is very long, and I'll let you read it in your own time if you must. But Roosh goes on to quote an Australian creationist site called Darwinian Fairy Tales, and then regurgitates several creationist myths, including Darwin denouncing evolution on his deathbed. Part of me wishes that Roosh was correct in this claim, because I would support anything that would mean that he never gets to procreate and pass his poisonous personality onto another human being. Number two, the secret gay agenda. Who would have thought that such an insanely sexually insecure, desperate wannabe alpha fail like Rouge V would also be a massive homophobe. I know, colour me fucking surprised, but that appears to be the case. In October 2015, he wrote an article called Why Homosexual Marriage Matters for Straight Men, to which of course your answer, as is mine, would probably be, it doesn't matter, grow up you sad bastard. But that's because you and I are well-adjusted, intelligent human beings. Rouge, on the other hand, had a much different perception. He wrote, legalising gay marriage is one phase of a degenerate march to persecute heterosexuals both legally and socially, while acclimating young children into the homosexual lifestyle. Yes, folks, it's the classic, oh no, the gays are recruiting your kids trope. I've yet to encounter one example of a child who has ever signed up for Dick Sucking 101. Let Roos continue. The societal reorganisation that is necessary to allow gay marriage automatically elevates homosexuals to a special class of citizenry. Yes, treating them as an equal elevates them to a special class. That class being a human being. He continues, it is a foregone conclusion that these oppressors, which include both straight men and women, must be ordered to give tribute, benefits and submission to the victim class. You will eventually kneel whether you like it or not. Tributes? Is this the fucking Hunger Games? And what's with all the use of words and double entendres like submission and kneeling whether you like it or not? I don't know about you, but I get the impression that Rouge V is hiding something from us. Deep, deep inside himself. Other consequences of gay marriage that he lists include straight men will be forced under the barrel of the state's gun to pay taxes for the AIDS drugs of gays. Forgetting, of course, that homosexuals and straight people have been paying taxes that pay for medication for both straight and gay people all the time anyway. Also, gays will be exempt from dystopian divorce laws because reasons. 
Gay marriage is state-sponsored anal sex. Millions of boys who grow up to experiment with cool anal sex thanks to the propaganda will grow up to lead sterile and disturbed lives because of it, if they're lucky enough not to avoid getting abused but through adoptions by homosexual men. Child abuse and paedophilic sex rings will skyrocket. Crimes by homosexuals will not be pursued or publicised, whilst false crimes done by heterosexuals will be manufactured. Of course, we all know how gay-friendly the media always are. I could go on with this but it's far too depressing and I think you get the point. Number three, domestic violence laws are unnatural. In 2013, Rouge penned a piece called The Unintended Consequences of Domestic Violence Laws. He argues, very badly, there are unintended repercussions to outlawing domestic violence because something to do with nature. He writes, the ecosystem is damaged, unprepared to take the unintended consequences of misguided intervention. It's interesting that when a law exists to protect someone from being abused, Roos suddenly feels that it interferes with the natural order and should be removed. You could apply this same logic to any law that exists, like say, oh I don't know, raping someone on private property. Oh no, sorry I forgot, that was a joke wasn't it? Yeah. He also ignores the fact that these laws apply equally to men who are victims of domestic violence. But his proof that these laws actually create more victims is based on very sound evidence, namely his own observations. He writes, In the Ukraine, I witnessed a man slap his girlfriend on a crowded pedestrian street. Over 20 men must have witnessed the event, but no one rushed to her aid. She also did nothing, not screaming or running away. With primitive domestic violence laws in Ukraine, you'd think that this sort of thing would happen all the time, but it was the first time I had seen it in the country that I had spent six months in. Men showing surprising restraint when it comes to violence against their women. Only in Rouge V's demented world can you see a man beat the shit out of a woman in public as nobody rushes to her aid or to help her and conclude that that is evidence of men being surprisingly restrained. He continues, in the USA, with nearly two decades of such laws on the books, what do you see? Women hitting men and women attacking men they don't even know. I'm sure you've seen many such videos on YouTube and Lively, which make it seem like women are warriors completely fearless of men. He seems to be implying that women should be fearful of men, but aside from that, it appears that facts don't bear out his conclusion. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, the overall rate of intimate partner violence in the United States declined by 64% from 1994 to 2010. Interestingly, a 2009 survey, also linked below, found that 44% of Ukrainians had been victims of domestic violence and 75% of them never tried to get help for it. Maybe they would have done if there was some kind of, I don't know, law protecting them. Number four, how he views women. In his book Daybang, which teaches you how to stalk, I mean, sorry, pick up women during the day, including hilarious advice such as hiding behind a tree and waiting for an attractive woman to walk past and then following her, yeah, very alpha. Roosh lays out how he perceives women and how you should too. When it comes to how you view girls you're approaching, I'd be careful about having too much respect for them. While I'm not saying you should hate women, my initial impression of them is that they're just lubricated holes that exist mostly for man's sexual pleasure. I have nothing funny or clever to say to that other than Roosh, fuck you, you degenerate piece of shit, die. And finally, number five, when he admitted to raping several women. Some people like to tiptoe around actively labelling Rouge as a rapist, but I intend to do no such thing. But I'm not going to quote him out of context and use my own interpretation of the law. I'm going to take Rouge literally at his word. In his Bang Iceland book, he recounts a time when he picked up a very drunk woman in a bar in Iceland, because apparently he's incapable of getting a woman who's of completely sound mind into bed. He writes, While walking to my place, I realised how drunk she was. In America, having sex with her would have been rape, since she couldn't legally give her consent. It didn't help matters that I was relatively sober, but I can't say I cared or even hesitated. I won't rationalise my actions, but having sex is what I do. Those are Rouge's own words. He literally just confessed to raping a woman. Now you may well disagree with the law, and that's your right. I disagree with many laws myself, but the law doesn't change just because you don't like it. Also, Rouge is inaccurate when he states that this would be a crime in America. Yes, it would. He seems to have conveniently omitted the fact, or maybe he's unaware of the fact, that it's also a crime in Iceland. I personally am against most 
drug laws. But if I get caught with an ounce of meth in my pocket, I'm going to be arrested, charged, and have to face the consequences and live with it. That isn't changed just because I don't like it. But this is not about someone taking drugs. This is about a man violating another human being in a way that he himself admits he can't rationalise, other than, that's what I do. Yes, Roosh, raping women is what you do. And you're very good at it, because it's not the only time he's done it. In the same book, whilst with another woman, he claims... In the middle of the night, I got another boda, put on a condom, and jammed it back in while she was half asleep. I came and passed out with the condom still on my dick. Old Roosh, you old romantic. And they say chivalry is dead, ladies and gentlemen. He's also quite the wordsmith when it comes to describing his sexual encounters, such as another encounter where he says, I put her on her stomach and went deep, pounding her pussy like a paedophile. What the fuck does that even mean, you sick son of a bitch? But even if a woman isn't incoherently drunk and is self-aware enough to comprehend the situation and make her own decisions, don't think that Roosh will respect or care about that either. Describing a sexual encounter he had in Ukraine, Roosh writes, I was fucking her from behind, getting to the end in the way I normally did, when all of a sudden she said, wait, stop, I want to go back on top. I refused and we argued. She tried to squirm away while I was laying down my strokes, so I had to use some muscle to prevent her from escaping. I was able to finish, but my orgasm was weak. Doesn't your heart just bleed for him? Whatever way you slice it, ladies and gentlemen, fucking someone who is too drunk to stand up or legally consent, fucking someone whilst they're asleep, and holding on to someone who doesn't want to be fucked anymore until you finish is rape. So you still think that legalised rape article was satire? In conclusion, Roosh V is the most repugnant piece of shit I've ever had the misfortune to come across online. And I don't think it's any coincidence that his pseudonym also rhymes with Roofy. Maybe one day he'll move out of his mother's basement and realise that the high point of his life was when an MP in the Houses of Parliament made fun of the size of his dick. But for me, this is the end. I will never bring this fucker up again because going through his blogs is just too depressing for words. But that's my list. Did I miss any out? Feel free to comment below. I'm Dick Coughlin. Good night. May God be less.